There's something about sailing the high seas. It's exotic, it's romantic, it's poetic, it's damned heroic. Slicing the swell, braced by a cooling breeze, crossing vast oceans, pushing into faraway enchanted ports. It adds a whole other layer of adventure and discovery to travel. Take this place, for instance. Could there be a better way of having this place reveal itself than by gliding in upon a mirrored fjord whilst dining on sushi, partaking of the essential hydration of a martini or two before bedding down in a six-star suite on an angel's breath mattress as the scenic eclipse smooches into dock so that you can awake to that? No. There is no better way. With a maximum of 228 guests, this extraordinarily luxurious discovery yacht will glide you in six-star comfort to destinations you've only ever dreamt about. Like this one, the epic countryside created by the fjords of Norway. Given Norway's bloodthirsty history of Vikings skewering foes, hacking off their heads and drinking entrails from their skulls, it's nice to know things have changed. This is considered the greatest country on earth in which to live, the most peaceful, number one on the world's happiness report. But it's surely the universe's great masterpiece as well, just shredded by fjords, spined by mountain ranges and iced by glaciers. Surely Mother Nature had a champagne breakfast before she got to work on this joint. We're sampling some of the best of Scenic's new 13-day Norwegian Fjords tour. And for us, the first port of call is the storybook town of Flom. This crazy, beautiful landscape was formed many millions of moons ago during the Ice Age. And thanks to it being too wet and steep and rugged, it's had little interference from humans, leaving tourists to now revel in all its natural glory. Every nook and cranny of this country is heartbreakingly beautiful. This is the kind of beauty that loosens a tooth that tickles you in the underpants. This is the kind of beauty that would bring tears to the eyes of a killer. Even the mist wants to cling to this beauty. And I was thinking, perhaps this is the kind of beauty best viewed from a distance. Forget that the closer you get, the more insane this beauty becomes. And could there be any better way to get closer than this? You just glide on in and paint yourself into the masterpiece. Jumping on board a Zodiac is the ultimate way to get an absolute eyeful of these epic surrounds. So you do this every day. Do you ever get sick of the beauty? No. No. Is it a changing beauty? All the time. Changing light, changing weather, changing scenery. I mean, we have definitely four different seasons here. Yeah. And then there's the wildlife. You see two grey dots, Yeah, that seals. All manner of marine creatures live in these pristine waters. What kind of seals are these? These are harbour seals. Harbour seals? Harbour seals. They can weigh up to 80 kilos or so, so that's about my weight. And um, at the most hungry, they can eat their own body weight in fish within 24 hours. I've been that hungry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The ample wildlife is only matched by the sublime natural scenery. Oh my God! Quite a lot of water coming out of there. There it is. How high is that? This is 600 meters. And then from, um, from the top to the bottom. Yeah, exactly. You actually get sort of a bit of mist on the face. Yeah, right. And People it's small pay a now. People fortune for that in a can. But the natural features of this area aren't limited to the fjords. Welcome to the magic.
magical white caves of Gudvangen. Here, we have captured the essence and the colors of the Northern Lights to give you the beauty that only a Northern Night can create. Mining has left a labyrinth of cave systems, now creatively transformed for our benefit. The white rock which gives the white cave its name is a northersite. It is, as far as I know, the only known deposit of a northersite on Earth. The other known source of a northersite is the moon. That's it, here and the moon, which only just adds to the many mysteries of what is a very mysterious country. With a little help from clever lighting and music, a visit to this former underground quarry is now a somewhat magical experience. We are in the fjords of Norway, travelling with Scenic on their Norwegian fjords adventure. As spectacular as this landscape is, it's also relentlessly impenetrable, but the locals were never going to let a mountain range or ten stop them, fuelled on a breakfast of smoked fish and bread, which, by the way, they somewhat alarmingly refer to as knackerbrot, they just bore straight through the rock, or, if feeling particularly creative, lay a railway line up at conquerors to the core. Departing from Flom, this train journey is not only one of the steepest in the world, it's continuously named as one of its most beautiful. But while it's the aesthetics of the railway that earn all the accolades, it was built for an entirely different reason. It was actually to connect the fjords to the mainland because uh, the fjords were not that easily accessible before and the main railway from Bergen to Oslo, the main two cities in Norway, is a connection point of this railway. Constructed almost completely by hand, this is pure engineering genius. And so when did they build the railway? It uh, started building in the 1920s and then it was uh, finished in 1941. It took that long to build? Well, and how many tunnels are there? 20 and 18 of them are built by hand. There's a stop along the way to appreciate one of the many sublime waterfalls of the region. Just be mindful of avoiding the resident nymph who, legend has it, spends her time trying to tempt the male of the species with her beauty and delightful voice. So she lures the men into the forest? Yes. Has her way with them? Yes. Kills them? Yes, she's normally also dressed in red, which is the colour that's, yeah, yeah right. to, right. to get I, the guys. I, I don't understand why nymphs always need to kill the man. <laughs> Neither do I. Is, is that a Norwegian thing? Uh, no, not as far as I know. Really? <laughs> While this landscape is undoubtedly blessed with more than its fair share of jaw-droppingly beautiful scenery, it's also loaded with tantalising tales and juicy history. With a crazed look in the eye, the dried blood of an enemy caked in the beard, one fist waving a metre length of toughened steel above the head, the other dragging a terrified wench through the mud behind, and a nasty little reputation for rape, pillage and plunder, you'd reckon the Norwegians would be in a bit of a hurry to bury their Viking history, wouldn't you? But no, in fact, this wild and wondrous episode in history is much celebrated, with a recreated Viking village now open to tourists in the centre of Gudvagen. So everything that you have here, you've created yourselves? 
Yes, um, this is not a museum, but what we have is a recreation of historical pieces and a recreation of a historical lifestyle. Right. Um, so, for instance, cooking here would be an authentic dish? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the autumn here, uh, sheep meat and cabbage uh, would definitely put part of the diet. This is a living, breathing piece of history, with many of the Viking workers here also living on site in their Viking houses with all their Viking paraphernalia and, of course, Viking weaponry. This is what uh, typically we think of when we think of Vikings. Yes, and of course it is uh, part of the real Viking story. and. Uh, Certainly in uh, this part of uh, the country, uh, it was the law to carry weapons. It was? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you uh, needed to know how to defend yourself, that's for sure. The Giranga Fjord is one of the longest, deepest and narrowest in the world and because of its geographical nature, it's kind of resistant to human interference, but knowing these Norwegians and their penchant for a tunnel, I'm sure they've bored a few through here. It's also regarded as one of the most beautiful fjords in the world, and as such has been granted world heritage status, which puts it in the same category as the Great Wall of China, the Great Pyramids of Egypt, the Grand Canyon, but you'll spot the difference. This is so spectacularly and utterly astounding. Adjectives such as grand and great neither seem to do it justice nor seem appropriate. Little towns like Giranga are small enough to be discovered on foot, but an even easier option is to take one of Scenic's e-bikes for a spin. What is the uh, population of Giranga? In the winter time, we are 240 people. Only 240? Yeah. I suppose it's not a big town, really, is it? No, it's quite small. What about in summertime? What's the population there? Around 10,000 every day. Wow. Camilla is one lucky enough to call this little slice of heaven home. Why do you choose to live in such a small town? I decided that I would rather live in a beautiful place like this, where I go out in the morning, every morning with my morning coffee and look at the mountains. Yeah. And then I can travel to the city instead of living in a big city, because then you end, never end up going to the nature, I think. The scenery around Giranga is the stuff of fairy tales, wild waterfalls, majestic mountaintops, and of course, these breathtaking fjords. The fjord farms high on the hills are now mostly deserted and remain as historical relics. They are all preserved, these uh, fjord farms. They're preserved? Yeah. yeah. So they stand as they did Yes, and they are all of them, the ones here in this fjord are still privately owned. So it's the owners that take care of them. But they, also, they get funding um, from the government and I think also probably a little bit from the UNESCO. Then there's the gondola at Stronda on the other side of the fjord giving you sweeping views without the arduous hikes those Norwegians are known to love. It's amazing, isn't it? There's always something to look at in this country. Unbelievable. And they keep building things to make the view even better. Yeah. I suppose the towns are small because there's not a lot of uh, usable land. Yeah, because so, usually it's more flat, close to the fjord, so it's easier and better to live there. And uh, so then there are many smaller villages. There's one there, one there, yeah. all along the fjord. Yeah. People are living. Norway's countryside is without doubt one of the world's most spectacular. After the beauty of the fjords, the next leg of our journey has taken us to the big smoke of Trondheim.
By world standards, this is hardly a bustling metropolis, but Norway's third largest city holds a very special place in the history and culture of this fascinating country. A thousand years ago, during the Viking Age, this was Norway's capital, trading centre, and place of fabulous royal and religious intrigue. This is where Saint Olav, Norway's eternal king, patron saint, and martyr of the Catholic Church, worked his regal and papal influence. This is where the low in stature, stout and strong King Zvera and his band of vagabonds and reprobates schemed to consolidate his reign and exercise a little muscle over the church. Owing to that power and influence, this remains the city where new kings receive their ceremonial blessing. Trond translates as a good place, and Heim to home. So Trondheim, quite literally, is a good place to call home. And it would seem that still rings true. What was clearly once a hot spot where King and God did their merry dance is now a hip and happening hot spot where the dance is one of students and technology, culture, music, beer and food. Almost one-fifth of the current population are students, giving this city an edgy modern vibe. But all around are reminders of its significant historical role. This is a very significant cathedral in terms of Norway's history, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the northern Gothic cathedral in the world, yeah. and it's also the largest Gothic cathedral in northern Europe. Nidaros Cathedral was built from 1070, and despite fire and war, there are still some original parts remaining from the 12th century. Inside, it's equally impressive. The sound is just fantastic, isn't it? It really is. It actually has almost 10,000 organ pipes. Really? In, yeah. the, in, in the cathedral here? Yeah. The well. acoustics are fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is what I love about this cathedral. It's so, well, most cathedrals, but this is a beauty. It's so grand. The thought, the ideas, the attention to detail, it's all incredible. And all, I imagine, <laughs> done by hand. It is, it is. So, just so. A decorated stone would take maybe a year to yeah. just work just out. Just one stone. Yeah. yeah. On the outskirts of town, set within an 18th century estate, is the Ringve Museum, Norway's national museum for music and musical instruments. Not only Norwegian instruments, but rare and antique musical artefacts from all over the world. I have never ever seen one of these. Why not combine two of the most bourgeois instruments of the 19th century, the piano and the harp, and call it, imaginatively, piano harp. This is a music boffin's paradise, but regardless of which era of the musical age you relate to, you're sure to be impressed. I thought of Norway, I thought of cold place, top of the world, inhospitable weather and terrain, ice, polar bears, smoked fish, mad men in tin helmets wielding axes, and there is all that. But clasp your eyes on one fjord and the real Norway reveals itself. The thing is, there are many fjords and forests of stately birch and tumbling waterfalls and cabins by the lake and snow tussled peaks. You get the idea. Norway, you soon realise, is one of the fattest gems in the Earth's crown of jewels. And to view it from the deck of the scenic eclipse just adds another layer of sparkle. 